guys, uh, welcome to another episode of WoW Weekly with Mist. And for this week's events, we have Torghast. It will be the Chorus of Dead Souls event. PvP Brawl is Cooking Impossible. World Quests will be the weekly, so super easy. Just um, take, you know, head over to Oribos pretty much on reset. Make sure you have them before you do any world quests. Day of the Dead will be this week. It's going to be on November 1st and 2nd. We still have the 50% experience buff and Dark Moon will be this Sunday. An unannounced event should be occurring. I just know this from, you know, past years and stuff, but WoW's anniversary is coming up, and realistically, it should be on Sunday, which is November 6th. So this is the 18th anniversary, and we know nothing about it right now. There's been no mention of it, but realistically, we should see it on Sunday. This week, we'll, we should get some info. And I will let you know about that um, pretty much when we uh, get that info. And on that topic, um, I just thought I'd let you guys know that I plan on changing the way I do these news videos. Um, sometimes it's tough um, juggling a lot of things together. And these news videos are a little rough on a person who unfortunately can't say that this is their job. I don't, I don't bring in enough money on this channel to say this is my job, which means I don't have as much time to do videos like this as other YouTube creators would. So with that said, I'm trying to make the Well Weekly um, a little more simple. And then I'd like to throw like a major events or longer topics into a separate video just to kind of help myself a bit. Sometimes it feels overwhelming. So yeah, it's been three years now that I've been doing these WoW Weeklies every week for you guys. And I've definitely had my moments where I'm like, I want to quit doing news, <laughs> right? And then I'll have people come up to me and say that they love the news and they, you know, look forward to it every week. And yeah, so, and I love doing the news too, but I do need to find like a balance because, you know, like I said, I'm not fortunate enough to be able to use this time as work time, you know? So everything you see me do on the channel, there's a job after that that I'm doing, right? I've always considered my YouTube channel like the other job, you know. So so just wanted to put that out there that there will be changes. It might not necessarily be totally visible right off the bat, but you'll notice it on weeks where there is more topics in there. Um, Cause on Well Weekly I like to cover everything in one week, but it's just a little rough on editing. You know, if I had an editor, that would be fine. But I I do everything myself on this channel. Record, edit. So I know that kind of like, I just slid that right into the weekly events. But I just thought I'd let you know. And it, it felt like a good time to tell you because, um, because we will know some more on the anniversary event. And we'll probably know this week. And, uh, and yeah, so my plan is that I will more than likely post the video going over that on probably the day they announce it, because that's kind of what I want to do now is just let you guys know about, you know, wow topics a little quicker. Uh, I do hold on to everything for the Monday videos, and then in turn, it's going to make the WoW Weekly a little easier on me. There's a little more time juggling on my end here. So yeah, just thought I'd let you guys know about that. So that is the weekly events. 
and a little additional info. Uh, let's get to news. Okay, so I figure a good place to start is the pre-patch. So we got the pre-patch uh, this past week, and it was a very buggy. Uh, definitely, definitely some changes for sure between the talents and the new UI. Uh, definitely some stuff to get used to. I love and hate the UI, you know? Well, hate's a strong word. Um, not to say I don't hate things and I haven't expressed my hate for things, but uh, we'll, we'll say I love and dislike the UI because I don't hate it. And I was very close to fully using it. And then I didn't like certain things with it. And now I've almost like gone back. So now I'm back to wanting to use the, the new UI. And uh, yeah, so let's just say I'm testing things, you know, <laughs> I'm not sure if I like it or dislike it right now. I want to love it. You know, I want to get rid of two major add-ons, uh, which for me is shadowed unit frames and bartender those are my two add-ons i use for uh, well i have other things i use for my ui but those are my two major ones because uh, shadowed unit frames is nameplates and bartender is my bars i definitely think we just need a little time for people to get used to it we need blizzard to fix some of their shit i'm just gonna say this is why you don't do a pre-patch in two phases i know there's people out there that think this was smart and by them separating it into two phases they're making it you know, so that by the time phase two rolls out, it's going to be playable. But I see it a whole different way. I see it as it's buggy as fuck right now. We've had literal, even if it's as short as an hour, we've had maintenances pretty much every day since pre-patch dropped. And it's probably going to take them all of this time. We've got a few weeks till phase two it's probably gonna take them all of that time to fix shit and then get you know and then of course the add-on developers will have to fix their stuff and then what's gonna happen phase two releases and we're probably gonna have problems all over again because there'll be buggy stuff with that content and then by the time that starts to get fixed uh, we will be rolling into the new expansion. It will be release day for Dragonflight. And as many of you guys know, um, pretty much, pretty much you disable your add-ons on release day. You know, you play without your add-ons for a day because generally things are buggy on <laughs> release day. So yeah, I am just, I am... I am seeing a month of bugginess over here. Yeah, so I hope I'm wrong with that, but they're releasing bits and pieces at a time. So yeah, not looking too forward to that one. But that is uh, how pre-patch has been. Uh, let me know what have your thoughts been so far on it. Do you like your your talents is your main class playable you know like to in your eyes anyway like every class is playable but do you still love the path your main character is going uh are you gonna main the same character that you mained in shadowlands uh are you using the ui or are you gonna stick with your add-ons leave a comment below and let me know how you've been liking it so far one Thing I thought I would add into the WoW Weekly this week is for you guys that have not purchased Dragonflight yet or Shadowlands <laughs> and you're just kind of deciding if you want to come back or if you're a new player deciding if you want to play past your free trial if you're using that, uh, Shadowlands is now included in the base subscription. Uh, that occurred on patch day because patch day is um, like technically dragon flight. So that basically means you don't have to buy Shadowlands anymore. You 
you pay your $15, $20, depending where you live. And uh, it's just in your base subscription. So that is from, you know, vanilla to Shadowlands. You would still, of course, have to buy Dragonflight. It is the new expansion. You know, if you don't care about the goodies, which you probably wouldn't if you're a new player, you probably just want to see if you like the game, right? Uh, so if you don't care about the goodies, you can get Dragonflight for like $50. So, On the topic of Dragonflight, you would need to have the pre-purchase in order to play Evoker when it becomes available in a couple of weeks. On the topic of some goodies... Jigglesworth Senior. So the Slime Cat, if you have not finished going for the Slime Cat, you still can. You have all the way till they release Dragonflight. When the pre-patch hit this past week, that allowed Faded to be on all difficulties, all raids, all the time. So if you wanted to spam this all in one week, you could. You know, assuming you had a guild or a raid team that could get past all those bosses and want to do all three raids in one week. Uh, but the point is you have, well, I won't say all the time in the world because you only have until, you know, November 28th, which is the release date of Dragonflight. But, you know, you don't have to wait around, you know, so if you're missing a raid, it's going to be up every week for you. Okay, so collectors, I regret to inform you that I am about to piss you off here, but blame Blizzard, don't blame the reporter. <laughs> so sneaking this in for today, uh, we just got news on what these Twitch drops are going to be. When I first saw it, one of the items, I was like, Wait a sec, isn't that an item I've been trying to go after for years and is super rare? And uh, the answer was yes. So we'll we'll get to that one. Let's go in order. So Twitch drop number one is going to happen on November 15th and it will end on November 7th. Your Twitch drop is the Dragon Kite. The next one, the one I've been going after for a long time. Twitch drop number two will occur November 28th and end on November 30th. And get ready for it. This is for the Feldrake mount. Yes, you heard me correctly. The, the hard to get your hands on will cost you a good chunk of money, Feldrake. And the third Twitch drop is going to be on December 13th, and it is the longer Twitch drop. It's going to run all the way till December 28th. So yeah, the first two were only running for a couple of days. Makes you wonder how many hours you're going to need to watch to get this one. But this will be for the Perpetual Purple Firework Toy. Uh, this is, you know, you could clearly see it. It's fireworks. And... One additional thing, and I don't know how I feel about this because you guys know me. I don't like to really promote myself. Like if you guys want to donate to me, like I just I kind of have it written in the description and then you do what you want with that written description. I never really ask for it, um, but I'm just going to say at the bottom of this post, they are issuing another reward. It's earned upon supporting a streamer. The reward is this Ikebod Harvest Golem Pet. I don't know if I said that right. I'll, I'll write it in the picture here. <laughs> you, you can feel free to correct me. Not that it really matters. I'll, I'll still butcher words, but feel free. And, uh, and so this pet is awarded and it says this will also run from November 28th until December 12th. And it says, show your support for your favorite WoW creators by gifting an eligible creator's channel to Twitch subscriptions. 
doing so will award you the adorable Ichabod Harvest Golem pet. I'm just going to say, I don't know really how I feel about this. I don't like people feeling like they absolutely have to gift subs. Um, yeah, so, but I guess if the pet's important to you, I, I do believe it's better that you gift your favorite streamer than just some random person. I had actually told you guys when we first found out that the Twitch drops were happening, I'd already told you guys that we were gonna do Twitch streams over there so that you could get the items. So I will be doing the streams over there during the time frame that these Twitch drops are are going on. And yeah, so feel free to, you know, help support a fellow streamer if you would like. So this is honestly a little unfortunate. I wish YouTube had a drop system like this because I'm just going to tell you guys right out. If you don't watch Twitch, you're going to hate going after these drops. Twitch is horrible. There's a reason I moved the streams from Twitch to YouTube, and it's a very good reason. And even if you have ad block, you may still see that reason over there because ad block uh, doesn't seem to get, you know, doesn't seem to work all the time on all the browsers. So it really depends what browser you use. If the ads are starting to get to you, and they will, because I'm just going to tell you straight out that every Twitch streamer out there, if they are not already running, 20 bazillion ads per hour they're gonna do it during the drops because everyone does because they know people are going into their channel so they will be hitting you up with ads non-stop and the good part of this is you're just in there for the drops probably unless you actually want to watch the streamer but if you're just there for the drops then just play the stream mute the stream and go on about your day, come back in a few hours, and, you know, your stuff should be complete, right? And, uh, yeah, so that is what I would do if you don't want to watch that particular streamer. Or, or like, you may want to watch them, but they might be throwing out so many ads that it's interrupting your chance of watching them. Because that's the unfortunate part of Twitch, is that it is disruptive. It's not like on YouTube where an ad hits and it pauses stuff for you. Like, yeah, it just doesn't do that on Twitch. The streamer is still streaming when that ad goes. Also, for those that are completely new to Twitch, I am going to be doing a separate video regarding this, how you can set it up and link everything. And yeah, so um, keep your eye out on that. I'll, I'm going to do that really soon so probably in the next day or so so something we discovered this week that i am actually amazed that they actually gave it to us i was expecting to continue deleting characters but the character limit has been raised and you can now have 60 total characters spread across your account On the topic of achievements, there was a new achievement that was discovered in Dragonflight. It is the new Mythic Plus Realm First achievement. And you acquire this by completing a 20 in time. Next up in news, we have the Threads of Fate system. So this system has been removed in Dragonflight. I personally don't really care, you know, I'm just gonna say it. I used Threads of Fate like a couple of times. It never was the reason that I was more excited to level. I, I thought it was an interesting concept, but it wasn't like game changer to me. I am on no team here, you know? I'm not on team yay, and I'm not on team nay. You know, like, I just, um, if it goes, cool. If it stays, cool. 
Um, but it's going. You know, that's the point of this topic is that it's not staying. It is being removed in Dragonflight. Next topic is a possible issue in the game. I did not encounter this issue, so I can't speak from personal experience, but I thought I would mention it in today's video just in case you're experiencing the issue and I've got a solution for you. So I guess when the pre-patch dropped, there was a lot of players that were having some FPS stutter issues. And, you know, I guess I'm not too, too surprised that this would be an issue. Because I remember something similar in Shadowlands where I had to do something with my graphics and everyone did. I remember a lot of us had to roll off of, I believe it was DirectX 10 maybe. Uh, been a while since I looked at all that. I just updated. But I remember uh, it had to do with DirectX. This might have a lot to do with the update, too, because I did notice that um, that people were saying that the game was a little wonky after the last Windows update. And in this article I'm reading, they're saying that Mac players don't seem to have the issue, but PC players do. So, yeah, makes sense to me. I am always discovering shit when Windows does updates. You know, like, <laughs> like, like, you know how many times I've started stream after a Windows update and I'm like muted <laughs> because, because it resets my broadcaster, which is defaulted to nothing, by the way, because I don't like to have anything on default, right? I like to choose all my stuff. So yeah, but anyway, sidetracking a bit here. So what you do to fix this if you are having some FPS stutter issues is... So there seems to be two options here. The first one is to type this command. I'm going to put it on screen so that you can copy it. This is the first thing. So you just type this into chat, hit enter, boom, done. If that doesn't work, the second option is this command right here. And um, same thing, type it into your chat window, hit enter, done. And yeah, that's how you solve that. And the last piece of news I have for you guys regarding retail is that they're going to be doing some upcoming changes to the rated solo shuffle. Um, I guess a lot of people are leaving the matches and... Uh, they're going to make the penalty uh, bigger. So it says they're going to increase the duration of the deserter penalty on repeat leavers. As for my accomplishments, well, one accomplishment was actually a week ago. I, I should have put it in last week's Well Weekly, but I I can't remember why I didn't. Maybe... Maybe that episode was reaching the 30 minute mark. I tend to try to uh, leave accomplishments out if we're at that point. Uh, but that was that I did all the Halloween achievements in Classic, which I thought was really good. Kind of, it kind of like proves to you how easy or hard an event achievement is, depending on how long it takes you to do it. And I got to say the Halloween events, one of the easiest. I did it all in pretty much one day. And then of course I have the mask achievement, but that's not part of the meta. Uh, but it, it got like half completed, which I think is really good for the mask achievement because that one is more RNG. That's the one where you like, trick or treat and uh if you get a treat you have a chance to get the mask uh and there's like 20 different ones something like that and sometimes you get tricked instead and that's a rep and you can only do that once every hour so it takes a while to actually get them all and uh and i haven't really been playing classic like non-stop or anything so yeah 
but I was really impressed with that. So that's my first, my first event title that I've done over in Classic. Didn't get the Headless Horseman over on Classic, but I do have it on retail. Um, but yeah, I, I put in some attempts over on Classic, but I, I'll, I'll admit I was not running it every day. I was just kind of running it when I remembered and felt like doing it. Yeah. But I would say I probably ran the dungeon, uh, I'd say five times. I feel like I did five, five runs. Which, in a sense, is kind of like 25 attempts, because the way it works in Classic is each person in the group can bring the boss out for a separate run of loot. So that's what I did over in Classic. Over on Retail, I actually finally completed the Druid's list of the Ice Crown Tournament stuff. So I have... Every pet, every transmog, every mount, and I'm really happy about that. It's been a uh, long time that I've been out there, and then I'm like doing it solid straight. I think I I take a break between activities, pretty much. So I would I had gone out there, and I'd focused all the transmogs, and then after I was done that, I took a little break, and then I focused all the pets, and then I took a little break. And then the mounts, I think I took three bricks between the mounts because there's a lot of mounts you can get in there. So this doesn't actually mean I'm done, but I'm done on the druid. As far as mounts you can get on any class, I'm done. But my paladin is still out here getting currency for the paladin specific mount and you'll probably see that in an upcoming video uh but probably not next week uh just because my paladin doesn't have all the dailies unlocked so i only really do like four currency well four to six currency per day uh whereas my druid was doing like almost 20 i think per day so yeah. <laughs> but I think I'll probably have the Paladin mount before Dragonflight releases. So um, that's kind of the time range I'm figuring. Basically, after that, I hearthed out, went in through my uh, my tab, my tabard into the void storage, because that's where I put most of them. And there's a little hint for you guys. If you're like me and struggle for space. Void storage, you can throw some of your soulbound stuff in there. It's also where I have all my Legion legendaries. So if you are also that kind of person that holds on to all the Legion legendaries, yeah, take them out of your regular bank and throw them in the void storage. Save you a lot of room. Uh, as far as what am I doing for the pre-patch and what are my goals for this coming week, um, all I want to do is level. Yeah, I want to take advantage of the rest of this leveling buff, which we only have for a couple more weeks. And yeah, so I'm just going to level some characters. I'm kind of leveling just whatever now. I've kind of gone through my list. Anyway, uh, that is this episode of Well Weekly with Mist. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you're having fun in the pre-patch. And we will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.